What happens when you combine metro speed, stop spacing and trains with commuter rail frequencies and the weirder station names ever? This is Tangerang Station, the western terminus of the Tangerang Line, and I'm going to say my classic phrase now. It is completely surrounded by houses, which is a good thing. We don't want to do the opposite and actually sacrilegious act that is building our station in the middle of nowhere and then surrounding it with car-centric development. But Tangerang may have took it a bit too far, because unless you live within a kilometer of the station, getting here is kind of a nightmare. The streets are so narrow, vehicles oftentimes need to take turns and this causes pretty bad congestion. Also, your only public transport access here are the frequent but also incredibly slow Angkots. Nearby is Pasar Lama, a place with lots of culinary options. Speaking of frequency, excluding the Nambu branch line, this is the least frequent line in the commuter line with 30 minute headways off peak and 13 to 17 minutes headways at peak. It gets worse at night. Train bound for Tangerang leaves Duri at 9.13 pm. Miss that? Good luck. The next one comes in 9.58. That's a 45 minute wait in a station that I have repeatedly called to be more ruthless than Manggarai. Fortunately, such a gap does not exist for trains going from Tangerang to Duri. The schedule on the weekends is almost the same as the weekly schedule but without some of the very early morning departures. Also again, this line runs on 1500 volts DC overhead wire on 1067mm narrow gauge track and has a top speed of 75 km per hour. The line is 19 km long and end to end takes just under 30 minutes. Next, we have Tana Tinggi, literally high ground. The bus stop across the street from the station serves Transjakarta lines T11 and T12, Agrama Sport Sikaring Line, AC34, and Tayo Corridors 1 and 2. For most people in Tangerang, this is the better place to use the Tangerang Line. Around 550 meters away is Balai Kota Mall. Unfortunately, it's almost dead. Next is the weird mess that is Batu Tiaper, literally flat stone, and Poris. Right across the street from Batu Tiaper Station is Poris Plawa Terminal, and Poris Station is inside Batu Tiaper District. Anyway, Poris Plawat is the terminus of the T11, T12, Tikarang Poris, AC34, and a bunch of intercity buses. There's also plans to connect the two with the sky bridge. Also, is it just me or that Poris Terminal is infested with mosquitoes? Like, I was sitting inside the T12 and I got absolutely obliterated by a swarm of mosquitoes that chased me inside the bus. Granted, it is 6pm and the doors are open, but I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. It's a good thing that did not give me malaria because that might slightly ruin the upload schedule on both channels. Next, we have Kalideras, literally fast-flowing stream. It is well over a kilometer from Kalideras bus terminal, which is also the terminus of Transjakarta Corridor 3, the SH1 to Soekarno-Hatta Airport, and a bunch of regional and intercity buses. You can either walk to that terminal, though I do not recommend that, or take the Jack 50. The Jack 50 also goes to Purinda Mall, but if you're going there, you're better off exiting in the next station. Next, we have Rawa Buaya, literally Crocodile Swamp. I do not see a swamp, but I do see a river. Whether it has crocodiles or not, probably not a good idea to jump in. Again, you can take the Jack 50 Angkot here. Google Maps says that there's a bus stop on the roundabout. I could not find a bus stop and the micro trans buses just get me. My suggestion is, if you want to ride the Jack 50, is that you walk until you reach this road with the Boba Ice Cream Shop. The airport train also stops here. Next is Bojong Indah. Bojong is the river peninsula. So this station's name literally means beautiful river peninsula. Technically, you can also ride the Jack 50 here, but it's a 600 meter walk away from the station to the micro trans bus stop, so not recommended. Especially due to the poor pedestrian infrastructure. Like a 600 meter walk in Sudirman Tamrin is a breeze. 600 meter walk here raises your blood pressure. Next, we have Taman Kota, literally city park. Unfortunately, the nearest city park is 900 meters away and is inside the gated community. On the bright side, it is only 200 meters away from Taman Kota BRT shelter, serving Corridor 3 and Lines 3F, and the recently reactivated 3D. Next, we have Pesing, which means... Pesing. P. Apparently, because back in the day, this place used to have a market and traders would use horses to carry their things and horses tend to do that. I speak from first-hand experience. Anyway, this station is the terminus of the 3H, a new line that exists presumably to reduce the load on Monas BRT shelter. 
due to the closure and demolition of the old Harmony Central BRT shelter because of MRT construction. The main BRT shelter is also a 500 meter walk away serving corridors 3 and 8. Here also lies the Indosier office. Unfortunately, again, pedestrian infrastructure is not good. Next is Grogol. Here you can transfer to Corridor 9 as this station is only 120 to 250 meters away from Kali Grogol BRT shelter, depending if you're going north or south. Next to this station is a regular hospital and a psychiatric hospital. Grogol Terminal is 600 to 700 meters away, though I wouldn't recommend doing that walk. Here also lies the level crossing that usually wrecks havoc on Corridor 9's frequency. And finally, Duri literally spikes. Transfer here to the Chikarang line, but besides that, the only other transit I can find is the M41 Angkot that goes to Season City Mall, Grogal Terminal, and Glodok, based on information I found online from Move It. The M41 doesn't even appear as a line in Google Maps, and I only knew about this line's existence when I went to Street View mode. Duri has extremely limited number of escalators and lifts, and unlike Tana Abang's mostly consistent flow of trains and people, Duri basically has to store 30 minutes worth of Chikarang Loop Line passengers and dump them on the twice an hour of peak Tangrang Line trains. For reference, one commuter line train can carry well over a thousand people, and Tangrang Line trains are usually at full load, even off peak. It's uncomfortable, it's inelegant. I'm honestly surprised that Duri's pickpocket situation isn't as bad as Tanabang or Manggarai. Despite all this, the airport train also stops here, and now I think we should talk about that. The airport train goes from Sukarno Hatta Airport to Manggarai, running express and only making limited stops in Batu Ceper, Rawabuaya, Duri, and BNE City. Unlike the commuter line, it uses EA203 series trains that have transverse seating and is made by Inca the state-owned train manufacturer, with help from Bombardier. The airport train is also more expensive with fares ranging from 10,000 to 50,000 rupiah, depending on distance, and you actually have to buy a ticket, either via an app or the ticket machines. The airport train does have a dual purpose. Not only does it provide a quick service to the airport, it also acts as royal trans on rails, for people who do not want to get squished 10 times a week. Also, it runs every 30 to 60 minutes. I've already covered most of the airport train stations in the video. If you want my thoughts on Mangarang, watch the Bogor Line video. But in short, the bottom platforms, which this train uses, are basically the back rooms. BNE City has easy access to MRT Jakarta. Though not to LRT Jabodebek, as a viewer pointed out, those who have to regularly transfer into Kuatas will have no problem getting those daily 10,000 steps. Nearby is Kendal Tunnel. Used to be a place for cars to do U-turns and is an apocalyptic nightmare in terms of congestion. Now they fully pedestrianized the place and it is beautiful. Also Grand Indonesia is a 600 meter walk away, but I do recommend you walk to 600 meters because they actually have proper sidewalks here. Then you get to Sukarno Hatta Station. It has AC and platform screen doors, automatically making it the most comfortable station in the entire commuter line network. There you can transfer to the Sukarno Hatta Skytrain that connects the station to all three terminals of the airport. The SH1 bound for Kalidaras also stops in front of the station. Since we're in the airport, we might as well talk about airlines. Oh well, the lack of direct Indonesia to North America flights and the abysmal connections to Europe. Flying from Jakarta is like using TransJakarta's VRT service, we got the transfer way too many times. So those are the services, how about land use? Well, I'll let the satellite footage tell you. Also, Tangerang has around 2 million people living in it and West Jakarta has 2.6 million people. All that in the context of an urban area with over 30 million people. Why does this line run every 30 minutes of peak? And worse, why is there a giant 45 minute service gap at 9 pm on the Tangerang bond schedule? The airport train only runs every 30 to 60 minutes, so I don't think that's to blame. I do agree that in its current state, you can't run trains too frequently due to the frequency of level crossings in this line. But I think running trains every 13 to 17 minutes of peak shouldn't be a problem. It isn't just the 30 minute wait, but also the fact that here I am riding the Tangerang line on a Sunday morning and I'm being squished like Green Line passengers on a Tuesday afternoon. Just increase off-peak frequencies, get rid of the awful 45-minute service gap, and this line is getting 8 here. Because apart from the 30-minute wait off-peak and the poor pedestrian infrastructure surrounding the stations, this line is as straight as an arrow. It's really quick with a top speed of 75 km per hour, and get this, 
an average speed of 40 km per hour according to my GPS speedometer. You'd be lucky to get an average speed of over 25 km when driving in urban conditions. This line has a sense of urgency that the Rangkas Butung line does not. I like to praise the off-peak headway of the green line, but the green line trains go like they're driven by old ladies, barely getting to 70 and frequently slowing down. Meanwhile, the brown line trains go like they're being driven by Mitro Trump's drivers. So my verdict, C tier.